Hi guys. Well, we actually have some sunshine in the Sunshine State today. Here on this lovely mid-January day. That would be, uh, are we at Thursday already? January 14th, 2021. And, yes, I am Sam Mitchell. This is Collapse Chronicles. And I'm going to kind of beat a dead horse today here on uh, on Collapse Chronicles. Where we're going to do kind of a part two of that uh, article I went over yesterday in The Guardian talking about this new report about our ghastly future, which was written by a I think a total of 17 people, but <coughs> fizz.org, fizz.org, and I think this was also published in The Conversation. This uh, spin on this same story is actually written by three of the authors of the report itself, and that would be Corey Bradshaw, Daniel Blumstein, and good old Paul Ehrlich. And uh, maybe we'll get some of these folks on the show here uh, soon. But we're going to hear directly from these doomsday prophets about their spin on this. Now, some of this is a repeat from yesterday, but they add quite a few other elements into this story that the Guardian did not get to, so I felt it was worthy of our time to dig a little bit deeper into our ghastly future for anybody trying to figure out what uh, your future and certainly the future of your children and grandchildren, if anybody listening to this, is of breeding age and still thinking on any level of having a child, uh, at some point you're going to get it. And maybe if this article can keep one child from being born onto this planet, then uh, obviously my life is not the uh, total waste of time that I have concluded it to be. So take it away, guys. <clears throat> Worried about Earth's future? Well, the outlook is worse than even scientists can grasp. There you go. The outlook for our future is even worse than scientists can grasp. Yuppers. All right. <clears throat> Anyone anyone with even a passing interest in the global environment knows all is not well. But just how bad is the situation? Our new paper shows the outlook for life on Earth is more dire than is generally understood. Yes, by about 99.9% of the clueless moron normies on the planet. And my guess is about 80, I'm going to take a wild guess, 80% of scientists such as that little uh, apocalyptic Michael Mann, for instance, uh, having no clue. Either they have no clue or they have no interest in the subject. Uh, it's, it's one or the other, or both, as far as I can tell, after being down here for 12 years studying the most important story in the history of uh, humanity, that 99% of people have no clue and or no interest. So, uh, what is the latest research bearing this out? <clears throat> The research published today, and of course, you know, they put the link over to the full report and all these other reports that it was based on. The research published today reviews more than 150 studies to produce a stark summary 
of the state of the natural world, we outline the likely future trends in biodiversity decline, mass extinction, climate disruption, and planetary toxification, we clarify the gravity of the human predicament and provide a timely snapshot of the crises that must be addressed now. No, guys, as all three of these men know, uh, these were the crises that needed to be addressed back when Paul Ehrlich was writing the population bomb. Uh, if they had addressed these crises 50 years ago, there might have been one drop of hopium uh, addressed now. Uh, whatever, guys. <clears throat> the problems all tied to human consumption and population growth will almost certainly worsen over coming decades. I don't know where this word almost came from in the sentence. Uh, will certainly worsen over coming decades. The damage will be felt for centuries and threatens the survival of all species, including our own. Our paper was authored by 17 leading scientists, including those from, is it Flinders or Flinders University, Stanford University, and UCLA. Our message might not be popular, huh? Do you think so? Our message might not be popular, and indeed it is frightening, but scientists must be candid and accurate if humanity is to understand the enormity of the challenges we face. First, we previewed the extent to which experts grasp the scale of the threats to the biosphere and its life forms, including humanity. Alarmingly, our research shows future environmental conditions will be far more dangerous than experts currently believe. You know, experts like Michael Mann, uh, experts like Bill McKibben, uh, you know, these experts uh, who are completely uh, in denial that they can't be that stupid. So the only thing to be said is that they are in denial, probably because they are breeders, uh, about how doomed we are. There, there is no explanation for Michael Mann coming on to 60 Minutes and spewing that crap that came out of his mouth about how we're going to turn this freight train around. Yes. Uh, environmental conditions will be far more dangerous than experts currently believe. This is largely because academics tend to specialize in one discipline, which means they're in many cases unfamiliar with the complex system in which planetary scale problems and their potential solutions <coughs> exist. What's more, positive change can be impeded by governments hmm, rejecting or ignoring scientific advice and ignorance of human behavior by both technical experts and policymakers. More broadly, the human optimism bias, <laughs> the human optimism bias, thinking bad things are more likely to befall others than yourself, means many people underestimate the environmental crisis. Yes, the human optimism 
bias. Our research also reviewed the current state of the global environment. While the problems are too numerous to cover in full here, in full here they include and uh, some of these were in the guard. I'm going to try to stick to the ones in this list that I did not go over yesterday. How about a halving, meaning that we have uh, destroyed 50% of all vegetation biomass since the agricultural revolution around 11,000 years ago. Overall, humans have altered almost two-thirds of Earth's land surface. And again, I think uh, these doomsday prophets need to look at their own optimism bias if, if they're suggesting, to me at least, that humans have only altered two-thirds of this planet. Humans, you know, depending on your metric, uh, like, like if microplastic pollution, for instance, uh, is one of your metrics, humans have altered 100% of Earth's land and ocean surfaces. Anyway, I'm not going to sit here and get in a debate with these uh, doomsday prophets. Okay. About 1,300 documented species extinctions uh, over the past 500 years, with many more than that unrecorded. More broadly, population sizes of animal species have declined by more than two-thirds over the last 50 years, suggesting more extinctions are imminent. Uh, okay, uh, the Guardian mentioned this one, of course. About one million plant and animal species globally are now threatened with extinction. The combined mass of wild mammals today is less than one quarter the mass before humans started colonizing the planet. So, in other words, we have, uh, we have, uh, let's see, if, if less than one quarter, humans have obliterated more than three quarters of the mass of wild mammals since we started colonizing the planet. And of course, insects are also disappearing rapidly in many regions. What's going on with wetlands? I'm looking over a protected wetland uh, here as I'm reading this. This is an example of a protected wetland. You know, you can, you can probably hear the airboats running up and down this particular protected wetland. So what is going on with wetlands? 85%, 85% of the global wetland area has been lost in 300 years and more than 65% of the oceans have been compromised by humans. Eight, so by wetlands, of course, they mean freshwater wetlands. 85% of wetlands have been uh, destroyed. Uh, in the last 300 years, and now, again, I think uh, these guys need to look at their own optimism bias by this conclusion, talking about how 50% of live coral cover, uh, you know, 50% of coral reefs um uh, have been destroyed in less than 200 years, and a decrease in seagrass extent by 10% per decade over the last century. About 40% of kelp forests have declined, and the number of large predatory fishes 
is fewer than 30% of that a century ago, which means we have obliterated more than 70%, you know, of the top of the food chain uh, species in less than a hundred years. And we have a bad situation only getting worse. The human population has now reached 7.8 billion, double what it was in 1970, and is set to reach about 10 billion by 2050. Uh, again, you can put an asterisk by that. I, I, I honestly don't know, guys. Uh, where I stand uh, on that statement. But according to these guys, um, the human population is set to reach about 10 billion in the next 30 years. More people equals more food insecurity, soil degradation, plastic pollution, and biodiversity loss. <clears throat> uh, then they have this <clears throat> beautiful little graph, <clears throat> this little chart showing major environmental change categories expressed as a percentage as a percentage relative to intact baselines. And so, I'm going to put the link to this story, and you can see in this beautiful red and blue chart how doomed the planet is. <clears throat> High population densities make pandemics more likely. They also drive overcrowding, <clears throat> unemployment, housing shortages, and deteriorating infrastructure, and can spark conflicts leading to insurrections, terrorism, and war. Essentially, humans have created an ecological Ponzi scheme. Consumption as a percentage of Earth's capacity to regenerate itself has grown from 73% in 1960 to more than 170% today. And this is talking about, you know, the concept of Earth overshoot, that every year we're consuming more and more of this planet than the planet is able to regenerate. Uh, which is, of course, uh, you know, behavior of a cancer cell. Uh, this, this is exactly uh, the, the definition of a cancer, is an, an, an organism that eats more of its host than its host can regenerate and uh, take a while to guess what that means for the host. <clears throat> High-consuming countries like Australia, Canada, and the U.S. use multiple units of fossil fuel energy to produce one energy unit of food. Uh, and then over this, how many calories uh, do we of energy, of fossil fuel energy, going into every single calorie we stick into our fat, clueless faces. Uh, energy, con energy consumption will therefore increase in the near future, especially as the global middle class grows. Then there's climate change. Yes, humanity has already exceeded global warming of one degree C this century. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Even if all nations party to the Paris Agreement ratify their commitments, even if they do that, warming would still reach between 2.6 and 3.1 C 
by 2100. Now, of course, Michael Mann is not an author of this study, uh, as far as I know, because Michael Mann does, you know, sounding like Donald Trump. Uh, anyway, enough of Michael Mann. Let's get back <clears throat> to uh, people with brains talking about the danger of political impotence. I will not make a limp dick joke here. Anyway, our paper found global policy making falls far, falls far short of addressing these existential threats. Securing Earth's future requires a prudent, requires prudent long-term decisions. However, this you know, this requirement is impeded by short-term interest and an economic system that concentrates wealth among a few individuals. <clears throat> but, you know, this whole thing, uh, now, don't get me wrong, uh, I, I am not suggesting that, uh, you, know, you know, these one percenters are, are to blame for a lot of this mess, but as they just pointed out, if you share the wealth and, and, and we reduce the income inequality on this planet, which I'm in full support of, that just means more people will have uh, more power to uh, destroy the planet. It's just uh, it, 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 this income redis redistribution, and, and, and my way of viewing this is just planet-eating redistribution. Is is all that uh, it, it, it is all it means to me? But anyway, that's another uh, rant for another time. <clears throat> okay, let's don't forget right-wing populist leaders. Obviously, uh, the main ones they're talking about here are Donald Trump, uh, Jair Bozo Nero, and Duterte, and Joko Widodo. Uh, Right-wing populist leaders with anti-environmental agendas are on the rise are on the rise, and in many countries, environmental protest groups have now been labeled terrorists. Environmentalism has become weaponized as a political ideology rather than properly viewed as a universal mode of self-preservation, and you will see more and more of this. Uh, that uh, as people start to figure out how truly ghastly our future is, that the powers that be are going to double down on, you know, on labeling environmental alarmists and doomsday prophets, uh, the chroniclers of the collapse of civilization, etc., as terrorists. Uh, clearly, this is a trend uh, forming in, um, in the 21st century. Financed disinformation campaigns against climate action and forest protection, for example, protect short-term profits and claim meaningful environmental action is too costly while ignoring the broader cost of not acting. By and large, it appears unlikely business investments will shift at sufficient scale to avoid environmental catastrophe. And this is, uh, you know, just a, a swipe at uh, this whole BS notion of sustainable development and all of this corporate greenwashing 
uh, crap building all over this planet. You know, the, the global corporatocracy throwing in with the United Nations and the World Economic Forum uh, trying to convince these clueless morons, mostly these little lefties, uh, that, that there is such thing as a sustainable global corp corporation. It, it, it is, it, it, you know, the, the levels uh, uh, of this big lie. Uh, even Greta Thunberg uh, has figured it out and uh, understands uh, what uh, we're looking at. Okay. How many times have we heard this before, guys? Fundamental change <coughs> is required to avoid this ghastly future. Specifically, we and many others suggest, how about abolishing the goal of perpetual economic growth? Yes, thank you for the suggestion, guys. Abolishing the goal of perpetual economic growth when the goal of perpetual economic growth is the number one driving force on the planet. They are suggesting that humanity is going to abolish the number one force driving humanity. It is not going to happen. Every one of these guys writing this know damn well it's not going to happen. Revealing the true cost of products and activities by forcing those who damage the environment to pay for its restoration, such as through carbon pricing. Don't even get me going. How about rapidly eliminating fossil fuels? Again, that's uh, right out of abolishing the goal of perpetual economic growth. Ain't going to happen. We are not going to eliminate fossil fuels rapidly or slowly or anything else. Uh, how about regulating markets? There you go. By curtailing monopolization and limiting undue corporate influence on policy, which is another way of saying in, saying reining in corporate lobbying of political representatives. And uh, anyway, the, the Guardian went over that, so I'm just going to move down to the bottom. <clears throat> Many organizations and individuals <coughs> are devoted to achieving these aims. However, their messages have not sufficiently penetrated the policy, economic, political, and academic realms to make much difference. Failing to acknowledge the magnitude and gravity of problems facing humanity is not just naive, it is dangerous, and science has a big role to play here. <clears throat> Scientists must not sugarcoat the overwhelming challenges ahead. Are you listening, Michael Mann, spouting your crap uh, on 60 Minutes? Scientists must not sugarcoat the overwhelming challenges ahead. Instead, they should tell it like it is. Anything else is at best misleading and at worst potentially lethal for the human enterprise. Well, that's the one good thing about it. It's, it's uh, lethal for the human enterprise. It's, the, it's, uh, it's lethality towards uh, the enterprise of every other earthling we share this planet with uh, is, is the tragedy here. 
uh, the one good piece of good news is that humans are we're taking ourselves down the toilet but uh, take a long look at this uh, protected wetland here on the planet while you still can and uh, the little dog and I are going to get out there and enjoy this protected wetland on this beautiful day during the collapse while we still can. Bye guys.